Come and run away with us as we make preparations to leave Langkawi. But first, a sweet spinnaker run to Tulaga Harbour to explore. We have a near miss with a lightning storm and another boat. And we enjoy our last reback buffet before checking out of Langkawi. So I said, hey, don't you wanna come? Come and run away with me. Hey, won't you come? Won't you come? And say by chance, don't you want me? A man who fully understands. I say he loves hard. I say he loves hard. We throw the kite and sail across to Tulaga Harbour. We anchor Excelsior in the sheltered bay just outside of Tulaga Marina where we spy horses cantering along the foreshore. I make some fishy friends. <laughs> the whole body spill of fish just went over my feet. They swam around the corner real fast and they didn't know I was there. <laughs> Brendan captures footage of this large water monitor on shore and the patterns on his skin are amazing. And as stormy skies approach that evening, we get a fright with some big nearby strikes. But next morning, it's clear skies and the crew are all eager to get off the boat and explore. It's a steep climb to the top, but the view is definitely worth it. The kids had so much fun sliding down into the rock pools. This stunning lighthouse at the entrance of the channel is pretty special. 
And believe it or not, it's one of the newer lighthouses in Malaysia and privately owned. We return to Reback Marina, where we make time to do a nature walk with our guide, the entertaining naturalist, Salva. There you are. Strong, strong smell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Micromelon food with them. My mind, they will grow faster, so I don't, I don't mind taking them. They grow faster because we have seasoned for that. Oh, yeah. Come boy, smell it. Smell, smell it, smell it. Smell it. Strong smell. Yeah. yeah. Strong smell. Keeps your rice fresh. There you go. What do you put it in with the rice there? Must do. With your dry rice. Uh, the pay is uh, made of this uh, leaf and then it's, uh, it's for the bullet wound and to stop bleeding. So where you are bitten by mosquitoes? Show me. No, man, no. Oh my goodness. Just the leg. I just love like that. See the green patch must be there. Then later on, you don't feel itchiness. So remember, you must do it harder, do it harder. So remember this plant, you can always take the view later on. Huh? This, uh, this, this tree could have come from South America. Oh. Yeah, this, in, in English, we call as the, we call as the Christmas bush. And uh, the flower bloom during the Christmas time. Uh, but then it become red color. Sometimes a soil we have red color, we call terra rosa. When you, when you harvest, you can harvest the ruby. And that's why geological phenomena of Langkawi is so unique. When you walk to the walk to the uh, to the Red Beach, you will see caves eh? and look similar color of this. Just like in in Australia, you have Uluru. Yes. Similar, similar substance of uh, of the rock uh, contained in, in Uluru is always the same. Yeah. It's uh, oxidized, or we call iron ore. Something like it become rusty. Yeah. Eh? I'm not a geologist, but it's just sharing the knowledge. Eh? Come. Nice, go out like that. Open up your lungs. Eh? That is the cat breathing. And I end up with dog breathing. Cat, then finally dog. <laughs> I tell you, simple, simple. That's why I say, don't believe in any yogis. They ask to close your eyes, they rob your money. <laughs> don't believe in any uniform for us. Yeah. Believe in you. Believe that you have to learn about your organs. Because the organ can teach you. Uh, you just need a little bit of indication from the others. Uh, from your father, those who have some gurus. Uh, but don't fall in, the, in, the, in them and then you give all the money to them. It's a big problem. They became multi-millionaires and you become poor in many things. Somebody take control. You must understand, you are your own guru. You are your own master. The moment you start to learn about nature, the nature will guide you. At the end of our nature walk, we decide to take off with the crew on Sharman S to Red Beach to check it out. And although the beach isn't actually red, we discover that it's the rusty red iron ore rocks that give the place its name. Iron ore. Beautiful. 
It's time to stop procrastinating and get back to boat work. We've got a lot to do before we set sail to Sri Lanka. What are you doing in there, mate? Fucking dying. <laughs> it's so hot. It's pretty hot, eh? Repacking. Show everyone how big our lockers are. Uh, I'll give you an idea. That's a that's a nine foot male. Goes all the way to the front. That's another that's another sup in there. Ten foot sup rolled up. A couple of surfboards on the thing here. We've also got a huge locker for our reef pick. I don't know what we would do without these lockers. They are absolutely enormous. Early next morning, I wake with a start when there's a loud crash. Oh, oh, no, oh shit! Oh shit! Captain! Yeah. To that machine! To that machine! To that steering! Can you come alongside? What will happen to me? No steering. No engine. What's the uh, thrust of my steering? Oh, no engine. No engine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Can't we just put ropes on there? We could, but he's got no steering, no thrust. I reckon if we can get them to just drag him over that dock and away from the rest of the boat, it's probably the best option right now. How do you like your tetanus in the morning? No, that book is just going to freaking turn into a fish. That thing's mutating. It's gross. You having a win sorting out all the dive, all the fishing gear? I've done the dive locker. Schmicko. Consolidating all of our fishing gear and get rid of, rid of all the rusted hooks and um, things we don't need. The boat is an absolute mess, but we've got everything pulled out so we can restart, lift a bit of weight and a bit of crap that we don't need, hey love? Yep, well we're lacking motivation after this morning's debacle. Yeah, 5.30 wake up call to someone nearly hitting us. Poor buggers next door, you just smash straight into them, eh? Absolutely thumped them. Did you tell them what happened? No, yeah. I filmed a little bit of it, but you couldn't really see because it was still quite dark. The catamaran, he, um, his gear selector on one of his engines <coughs> snapped while he was in gear and it didn't matter which way he went, it just obviously throttled up or down and he just, the dude just fucking panicked, absolutely panicked. Um, he just let go of the steering wheel and like, into he our let neighbors. go of the steering wheel and ran to the front of the boat. It's not the first time I've seen this either. Like, for some reason, people get in their head if they just run away from the helm, they can stop themselves from hitting another boat. You've got these two big diesel engines and, you know, 15 ton boats. And he just went bang straight. And once they get momentum, they're quite hard yeah. to stop. He hit this guy so hard beside us. There's a heap of damage. There's a hole on the side of his boat. They were in tears. Then he hit the next boat. And then he just, he just, he just wasn't listening. And I was trying to tell him to, I was trying to tell him to just shut his engines down and we were just going to tie off and hang on to him but he just kept he just I don't know he just it was like he panicked and was frazzled and then he did a u-turn right here in front of us just missed us again missed all these boats came back around and I don't know where the fuck he was and then going. he plowed into straight that into the big boat, boat over there. there and he hit that one really hard um, and it's he, up for sale yeah, too. Once he hit that, I jumped on the bow of the other one. I just, I basically just, I told him to shut his engines down and said, You've already hit it, you may as well stay here. So then he stayed and we called the ferry over and he took him away. But oh, that all happened at 4, 5, 5 30 this morning. Yeah. I feel sorry for him, but by the same token, he just, he just wasn't listening. Yeah. And he was panicked and people were telling him just to shut his engine down, to shut it down. And he just wouldn't fucking do it. And then, Twice, twice I watched him while he was motoring leave the helm and it turns out his steering was fine. So he could have steered, he could have steered away. You're kidding. He just he just had it in his head because it was like asymmetric thrust, right? So he had a lot of power on one and nothing on the other. He was just assuming that the steering was Or the buggered. rudder had gone. Right. So what he was doing was throwing his engine in reverse, but because the gear selector was stuck, it doesn't matter which way you go forwards or backwards, it'll up the throttle. So 
even though the engine was stuck in forwards, if he put it in reverse in throttle, it was still giving it even power. So while he thought it was in reverse, he was giving it more power forwards. But he let go of the helm. He just kept let go of the helm, and that was when he smashed into that one there. Had he just shut the fucking thing down and turned, he'd have been fine. But anyway, it is what it is. Hindsight is twenty twenty vision. So surprised he didn't hit us, considering our neighbours so close, and our bows are actually sticking out further than them. Way further. We got so lucky. Oh, so lucky. That could and have the been other thing catastrophic. Is, the other thing is, right, he he had the problem as he was leaving. He was leaving the marina, had the drama, and then chose to turn to around come and in. come back in. In darkness, right, with only two people. That's so dumb. You have a problem like that, drop the anchor. Throw the anchor. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the channel. Yep. Drop the fucking anchor. Someone will come and help you later. It saves you smashing into five bloody boats, you know. Yeah, like on Dancer, our steering cable snapped and we just... Just go out. Threw the anchor yep. out. Get out. Go out, put the anchor down, you stop, you have, you calm yourself down, and you think, and then you, you sort of assess the situation then. But you don't, you know, people like that, they just... They panic and, yeah. He wasn't listening. Almost wasn't make listening. it worse. When he's smashing that boat there, I'm like, mate, shut your engine down. Shut it down. Just stay here. No, you fucking do it. He's running around, he's looking for fenders. Mate, it's too fucking late. You've already hit the boat. Don't worry about the fenders. Yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. We get it, we get back to this monstrosity of a job i feel like we've got more damage on the boat here that we've created ourselves rather than being hit by someone yeah we've got everything pulled out but once we get it all packed away and get rid of all the junk we can give her a big clean up and we'll be good to go big gurney a big birthday and we're out of here we're like 10 days from leaving for sri lanka <laughs> crazy time i organize all of our medical supplies and first aid kits and i go through our grab bag as well grab bag ready to go. Um, we have a bucket, collapsible bucket. We've got a signal horn. We've got our flares, plenty of those. Some waterproof matches. A, um, what do you call these? Strobe light. A lighter, compass in here. A radio. We've got a, um, EPIRB, which will send out our GPS signal if we um, are in strife. We've got a V sheet under there, toolkit, um, spare dinghy keys. Not sure why they're there in there. I guess if we have to get in the dinghy at some point. Um, a nice waterproof bag to put it in, and I'll put a few other things in there. Um, they say peanut butter is a good thing to have in your grab bag, um, just for a high protein source of food um, that's readily available and keeps for a while. So yeah, putting it all together and getting ready to cross the Indian. Woo! Woo! Glad you're doing something. I've got my life vest on. I'm Feeling very about good. the most hungover I've ever been in my life, so Sarah's doing all this shit and I'm just watching <laughs> watching her modelling the sexy life jacket. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a good one. Oh, I'm going to we hire a car with the Sharman S crew and head on into town for supplies, passing Buffalo on the roadside. We stock up our provisions at some of our favourite stores in Langkawi, but there's always time for a bit of fun. <laughs> You're a child. The lovely setter helps us with all our supplies and we check out at Langkawi with our friends on Sharman S. Now it's time for our last buffet breakfast. And Andy serenades us with an a cappella song at the Yachty Jam session that afternoon. It was a bittersweet final evening with all our Yachty friends.
My last minute Lazada order came in and I was able to transform the saloon. And I had my last cuppa with my girl Danielle. Next morning, we're ready to go and we get some baby Dawny cuddles in first. I'd say we're physically ready, but maybe not emotionally. She's taking selfies of herself, <laughs> sucking on the phone. And... It was like 50 times yeah, yeah. Hi. That's a cute little onesie. Hi Rob. Sharm and S had soon cast their lines and were on their way. Woohoo! We'll see you in Sri Lanka. Woohoo! See you guys. Safe passage. And now it was our turn. You know how to drive this thing or what? Just because yeah, it has wings. Just because it has no wings doesn't mean you can't drive it. <laughs> Love you guys! <laughs> Thanks, man. Catch his ladder. See you guys. Yeah, He's at least a K in front now, Brendan. I oh, know, we've lost him. We've lost him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to all our new subscribers. And join us next time for our biggest passage yet across the Indian Ocean to Sri Lanka.